Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. As you guys know, we've recently been teasing quite a bit about this new project that we're going to be starting for brothers only called The Badr Club. Now, a lot of sisters have been commenting saying they wish there was something out there of a similar calibre for sisters. And we think we might have found something that you sisters will be very, very interested in. And they also happen to be the sponsor of today's video. And they are Modest Trainer. Modest Trainer is a personal training business by sisters for sisters. That's right, no men involved. The same way with the mother club, there's no sisters allowed. Here, there's no brothers allowed. So brothers, skip ahead to the timestamp that I'm showing on the screen. As for the sisters, so what do they do? They offer one-to-one -one online classes or offline classes, fitness classes. They offer nutrition plans, diet plans, accountability. One of the hardest things, when you're, whether you're trying to gain weight or lose weight. I know in Ramadan, some of us, we you know, eat so much that we end up putting on more weight rather than losing weight. And some of us lose weight and so on and so forth. Whatever it is that you've done, whatever it is that your goal is, you can contact them, make a customized plan around yourself. Not only that, they also have boot camps where they do specific group activities, specific group classes where you will be motivated by everyone else around you. And the best thing is they do thorough security and background checks on each and every single person to make sure that it's a sisters only space. Now, for you guys, that's right, the viewers of Ramadan with the Mandem, of Nasiya Sessions, they are giving you guys 15% off any single one of their activities, any single one of their classes. All you have to do is use the promo code ACTIVE15. And one thing I really want to stress to you guys is this boot camp that they're doing straight after Ramadan in May. But guys, remember, your body is in a manner from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know, physical fitness is one of the five things that we focus on at the Badr Club for the brothers. But likewise, it's just as important for the sisters. Number one, for the sake of Allah. Number two, for your own self, for your health. Number three, for your spouse as well. It's important that you keep in shape. And this is something that we also talk about on the Badr Club with the brothers. So without any further ado, we'll get into the episode. But don't forget to check them out. Drop them a DM. I'll put all the details on the screen right now. Drop them a DM, message them, and see what they can do for you. There's no harm in trying. And don't put it off, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. You know yourself. You won't do it if you procrastinate. So just take that first step, get into it now, and I promise you, a few years down the line, you're not going to regret it. With that said, let's get into the episode. Assalamu alaikum. Peace. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Amma ba'ad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Brothers and sisters, welcome back to another episode of Ramadan with the Mandem. On today's episode, it's a very special episode because it's the first time we've had a brother on the show who isn't from London. We were supposed to have a few more, but Qadrullah wa Masha they couldn't make it. But if there's one guy you can rely on to make it, it's this brother right here. So we'll introduce... You rely on him so much to make it. He made it to two Umrah trips back to back. That's what I'm saying. We'll get into it. Don't worry, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Really? You're coming to the third one as well? I thought you were coming to the sister's one. With a marriage, innit? No, you said you were going to bring a wife. Inshallah. That's what you say. We'll see, we'll see. If you ask this podcast. We'll see. You never know, you never know. So go on, give salam to the people. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is brother Hamdoun. Uh, Imran, you want to give salam to the people as well? Assalamu alaikum. This is brother Imran, previously known as Dawah Man. But Dawah Man's dead now. We just stick with Imran ibn Matul. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, Hamdoun, what was the first video you can recall from to the best of your memory ever watching of ours? Of yours? It's none other than the old Dawah Man. It was, I remember one shouting in the masjid. Uh, shout out one. Yeah, sh one of them was just mad. And I think that, that was the first video. That was the first video I seen. Uh, did it throw you off or? Nah, it was all right. <laughs> it was all right, but it was like it was either that one or the guy with the earring. The earring, wow, that's. It's one of them two. It's one of them two. One of them two. I think it was the earring one. But then straight after, I seen the masjid one. The shout out one. Yeah, and then it was like whoa, and then. How long ago was that? This was. I was probably. What? Don't worry. Um, like three, four years ago? Three, four I was going to say my age then. Three, four years yeah, ago? Yeah, three, four years ago. Yeah, three, four years ago. Okay, I'm not sure about yeah. that. What was your initial, when you first saw it, what was your first thoughts? What were your first impressions? Obviously, do you know when everyone goes through that stage of practicing, falling off, reminders? It was a reminder. Speaking to the mic. It was reminders, isn't it? I was going through like reminder phase. 
where yeah, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> taking classes or anything, but I'm just listening to reminders, Imam boosters and stuff like that. And then it would come across that, I'd be like, yo, I need to start doing this, I need to start doing that. And then I'd come more across more videos, just looking for boosts, not even seeking knowledge at all. It was just all um, Imam boosters. That's what, that was my first encounter with you lot. And then how soon after did you end up on Umrah trip with us? Like a year later? Or oh, two, I reckon two. I don't know, I can't remember. I'm, not, I'm very bad with it, like time. But at least you, but the way we came into contact is that we met you at the Umrah trip. Nah, it was the promo. The promos you did with ah. Part 4, Manor Park. Okay. I've done them. Yeah. I remember, like, I don't think, I, I think I told you this. I actually had a dream. Okay. I had a dream, me and my brother were walking towards the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's grave. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Going, going to say salam, like Fajr time. And then I just woke up. And then I thought nothing of it. And then I come downstairs one time and I seen you man in Umrah. And I thought, I go to my mama, I go, Ma, shall I go Umrah? She was like, um, yeah, go. I was like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. My mom was like, if it's something good, just go. I was like, I don't know, I don't know. I was just being bare, two minds, and she just said, just go, just go, just go. There and then I called, I think I called you. And I called you and I booked it off straight away. I remember, I remember you messaging on Instagram. Yeah, I was being bad, paro. I was like, nah, listen, these men are gonna take money off me. <laughs> <We're not laughs> and uh, I remember seeing your Instagram, <laughs> and I was just, I was going through some of your, some of your pictures and videos. You, you were doing the boxing thing back then, mashallah. And uh, you just seem like a, you know, just like an active guy. And I remember I even mentioned it to you. I don't know if you even remember, Imran. Because uh, you know something you ask, like, who's coming, like where they're from, and where? So I say, like, more from Manchester. He seems quite active. Seems like a good brother, mashallah. He's gonna come on the trip, whatnot. And then, uh, and then, yeah. After that, next time we saw you. Yeah. Was uh, was at the airport that he from? Yeah, bro, it was, it was awkward. Because I have, obviously... You didn't know anyone, I didn't right? know anyone. I was, I think, I was the only guy from... No. no there's a few from Manchester, Manchester brothers. But you didn't know but anyone. I didn't know everyone. Even the guys from Manchester. You didn't connect I didn't them. know them properly. Like, most... It's mad. I don't want to say I'm bait. But people would say I'm bait. But um, people know of me in Manchester. In the community. In the community know of me. Like, obviously, with the stuff I do in the community, people know of me. But obviously, people would be like, do you know... Do you know? Do you know this person? Do you know this person? I'd be like, no, I don't know him. Yeah. Like even there's a brother in our armor trip. I didn't know, <laughs> even though he was like ten minutes away from me. Did not know who he was. Never seen him before in my life. But the, you know the thing that was beautiful though, was that on that trip you met so many brothers yeah. up and down the country, yeah. and you stayed in touch with them. Yeah, alhamdulillah. And man. you'd visit them. Alhamdulillah. Now, alhamdulillah. I think in the in in like throughout the, the last two years, how many times have you been to London? Bears. Count, lost count to visit the brothers. Yeah, loads. Does that loads. make sense? And that's a beautiful thing, Wallahi. And you know, that's actually also is a hadith. The Prophet so I said so. him, he mentioned that there's a man who's traveling, and Allah sent an angel to him to ask him, "Why? Where are you going?" He said, "I'm going to visit a brother." So he says to him, "Why? Has he done something for you? There's a reason. He did something for you." He said, "No. There's no favor he's done that to me. There's no reason I'm going. No ulterior motive. So why?" I'm going because I love him for the sake of Allah. Mm -hmm. And the angel said, and then know that Allah, he loves you. So when you go and you visit someone for the sake of Allah, Azza wa Jal, it's a reason for Allah Azza wa Jal, to love you himself. Does that make sense? And that's one thing that stood out, like, mashallah. Because like, imagine, Nabil didn't go to Ram Rachid with us. Yeah. But Nabil knows you. And I remember when I, when I met Nabil, he would talk to me about you. Yeah. Oh, Hamdun, oh, I'm going to go see Hamdun in Manchester. He only came once. He, he, came, <laughs> he, got, he came once. He tried to get me to come that day. I was like, but like, I would have come if it wasn't such a big crowd. I heard it was a big <laughs> jama'ah that day. <laughs> the biggest crowd I deal with is the Umrah. Like half the Umrah, I can't deal with the big crowds anymore. The point is though, but that's a very beautiful thing, mashallah, tabarakallah. Because especially at the beginning, you didn't have many brothers, right, yeah. in Manchester. I remember Hamdun used to call me saying, Ak, because I'm trying to, I'm, like you went through being a Salafi, but like alone. Yeah. Does that mean? So even though there's Salafis around, but you just didn't know them. So you're trying to stay firm on the Sunnah of the Remember Muslim. when I used to call you? I remember we used to, we'll used to get, have this we'll, phone call conversations. We'll get to I remember it. I'd be walking up and down my road, talking to Hamdu. I'm not even going into my house. We're, just, we're talking, talking, talking. Sure. People are coming to him, trying to give him some shubuhat, some doubts. But he was, he was firm. And like, because he was trying to hold on to his deen, for him, he'd have to come all the way out of Manchester to London mm. to meet some brothers. And well, like, although that is not easy, but. I think that's a very good thing that you did, Alhamdulillah, mashallah. I'm mm -hmm. only mentioning it so people can take inspiration. Does that make sense? That there's some brothers that come from Umrah trips that are from Birmingham, Manchester. Yeah. Unfortunately, we can't see them all. Does that make sense? But mm. they can come. Does that make sense? Sometimes you need to make that journey for your Iman. No, 100%. You need to make that journey for your Iman. Wallah, like even now, Alhamdulillah, it's gone. I think, I've, Wallah, I take it as a, uh, it was a test. Because, mm. Wallah, I came, I remember um, going, f I, went f I went from a stage where Alhamdulillah, my whole family have been practicing. 
sure. practicing. Like my, my dad, alhamdulillah, he's raised me to the best of his ability. Um, he's back now, alhamdulillah. Allah alhamdulillah. 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 Um, they raised me up from the best of the ability, tried everything. Took, I remember my dad, you didn't have a car, he used to take me on a bike, I was, and he used to put me on his back and just take me to the middle. And obviously, as a kid, you never appreciate. You never appreciate. And I used to say, I don't want to go to mosque. I don't want to mosque. He used to take me literally on his bike, piggyback me all the way to the masjid. I'm wow. back. And he used to be outside waiting for me. But obviously, as a kid, you don't know. You're thinking, oh, it's a waste of time. This is that. Um, obviously, and then. Do you ever think, how am I ever going to repeat that? Well, no, no. There's no. There's no, like, even. <laughs> think. Well, there's certain things they do. You don't think, like, you'll never, ever do anything. I think one of the sons said, even in a moment of the mother's. Contra- uh, contraction, you'll never be able to. Yeah. Well, that's crazy. Like, so I used to never. Th- this is like the h- household I've come from, where madrasa was always a thing for us. We remember we used to come back from school. We used to have an hour eat. Mum used to always make food on the table. Eat, go straight to madrasa. Four forty-five till seven o'clock. Come home, sleep. That was that was our routine. But um, obviously, as soon as you get older, you start you start. The, the path becomes hard, isn't it? Yeah. And you meet people, you're a lot more independent. So this is, uh, this is the age where I started becoming independent and stuff like that. And you meet people, going to high school, this is that. And like, I've kind of fallen off now. And Allah, whoever says, whoever says friends don't have an impact on you are the biggest lies you'll ever meet in your life. Allah, like, I don't care how strong your iman is. If you're, s- if you're spending majority of your time with these people, they will either you're either giving that to them or they're giving that to you. No two ways around it, and that's that's fact. Because well, I like I remember I used to say to myself, "Yeah, now nah, these people are good. These people are good. These people are good." <coughs> but um, nah, they're doing like so I, I had two groups of friends. The Muslim ones who would never pray, and they used to do bad deeds and this is that. But obviously when Ramadan came, they'd, 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 they'd be patting up, and I used to have non-Muslim friends who. They used to remind me, oh, Alhamdulillah, you can't have this, is haram. Make sure you pray. So me, Shaitan came to me in the sense of, look, your non-Muslim friends are reminding you to pray. Non-Muslim friends? Yeah, reminding me to pray. I used to be in his house, and he used to tell me to pray in his house. So I'm there thinking, this guy's a good friend. I'm praying. He's telling me to pray. Whereas my Muslim friends, when I used to go to the masjid, they used to say, oh, look at this sheikh. This, this, that. So Shaitan came to me in that angle of, look, chill with more with your non-Muslim friends. They remind you to pray. And I used to say to my dad, Dad, look, these friends are better than the Muslim friends. And that's never, because one person comes with Tawheed and one person doesn't come with Tawheed. That's yeah. all. So that's the most important manners a person can have, is Tawheed. So I used to think, do you know what? I'm better off hanging with these non-Muslims. Over time, he stopped reminding me of Salah, because that's not his duty. He doesn't, that's not his duty. He's yeah. not his duty. Maybe he's, he, they just be a nice one yeah. time, two times. Do you know what I mean? Whereas a Muslim, it's his duty to pray. And whether, whether or not he prays or not, he ha- knows he has to pray. I'm really, really sorry to disturb the podcast. I'm sure you're enjoying it very much. But if I could just take a few moments of your time, brothers and sisters, the reason why we set up this podcast in the first place was to try and fundraise for our studio, for our da'wa. You guys have seen the fruits of the da'wa for yourself. Right now, as you can probably see behind me, progress is being made. And inshallah, this is going to be the start of a brand new chapter for our da'wah, where we're going to be putting out high quality, quality content on a daily basis, inshallah, new shows, old shows, you guys are going to love it, inshallah. But with that said, we need your help. There's a link in the description, please, if you're able to donate, donate whatever you can, inshallah. And also, there are some account details there if you'd like to set up a standing order to help us with our monthly recurring costs. Wallahi, that would go an extremely long way. Our rent for this studio area is £1,000 a month. If we can get 10 people to give £100 a month, that's the rent sorted. So if you can set up a standing order, Wallahi, that would go a very, very long way for us. With that said, please don't forget, there's something else you can do which is absolutely free, which is just like the video. Drop a comment down below. That really helps with the algorithm and gets the video out to more people who then may be able to donate because of you helping the video get to them. With that said, let's get back into the podcast. Whereas a non-Muslim, he doesn't care whether he prays or not. So over time, I've stopped praying now. 
And I'm not going to delve into too much and things. That's what I'm saying. Look at the trap of shaitan. Like sometimes shaitan does it. It will make you well, think like, kufara better. Like I even remember Sadat al he, taught, he, he um, told us when, you know, he used to live in Birmingham as a kid. Mm. And he used to go to a school, a Muslim school. But they were Sufis. Yeah. As a kid, right? So uh, uh, he would come home and he would say to his dad, he would say, you know, dad, these are doing X, Y, Z. They're like Sufis or whatever. They weren't like grave worships or anything. Yeah. But they were, they were Sufis. Does that make sense? Um, but it was a Muslim school. And his dad said to him, he said to him, I'd rather you be at this school with these Sufis yeah. than be with, in a public school with Kufar. Mm. Does that make sense? And um, so, the, so, so the Muslim, Mahabadi is always better than the Kafir. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Always better than the Kafir. 100%, 100%. And sometimes Shaitan will tell you, look at these Kufar, they're so polite, they do this, they do that. Akhi, they will take your deen away from you. 100%. As Allah said in the Quran, وَلَن تَرْبَعَ عَنْكَ الْيَهُودِ وَلَن نَصَرَ حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتُهُمْ They will never be pleased with you, these Jews and these Christians yeah. until they take, until you follow their religion. But Afran, go on. So now, I've, obviously, so I've started doing things which I've never thought I'd ever do. May Allah forgive me for it. Um, and, and obviously now, I've come Umrah. I said, you know what? Talk to us a bit about this Umrah trip. How was it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, do you know what? It was the best thing that Allah could have ever written for me. Because... Even though, and it, well, like, it's like, you go, I went from, like I said, coming from a practicing family, I'm thinking I knew about the deen, and I came onto this Umrah trip, and I thought, you know what, I got my basics, I know my basics, this is that. And then, one thing Imran, and Ustad Yasin, may Allah honor him and preserve him. Mm. They've, they've done so much, <laughs> and in the sense of, they didn't come out to, because I, I, I was thinking it's gonna come out, and I'm gonna be, teach this, teach this, it's gonna be non-stop teaching. It's nothing like that. We were, we were vibing a lot more than we were actually studying. Does that make sense? And then from the, stu- from the vibing, they were dropping gems. You drop gems about Tawheed. We only had probably one class, actual class, the first time you came. And it was about Tawheed. And even that, he wasn't even going into depth. Was this in Umrah? In Umrah, the first yeah. time. The first time we had that massive room. You only probably did one proper class with us. The rest uh, was reminders. Yeah, and the rest were reminders. And from that, you come... To, well, like from like seeking knowledge, you realize how jahid you are. The more you, the more you learn, the more you understand how ignorant you are of things you didn't know. And from that, I was like, bro, I like, I'm like a fish in the water. Out of water, I don't know anything. And then, so that from that, that opened so much doors for me. Well, like it opened, it connected me back to my fitrah, I'd say. Because our fitrah is to seek knowledge, to learn, to know about Allah. And from knowing Allah, you, your, your ibadah becomes better and stuff like that. So, Allah, it's like, it made, it made, me, it made me open my eyes to see to the things that I was doing before. And I kind of looked back and said, you know what? Is that how far I've come? But when you're in there, you never realize, you never realize how far you, you're going. Just like someone who's digging, digging, digging. You don't know, you don't know how far you're going to go until you come out and you see what, that's, 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 what deep. I that's how deep I was. Do you know what I mean? So coming back from that tri- trip, Allah, the first time, I was like, whoa, I've actually let so much things slide. And when, when, you're, when, you're in, when you're in that situation, you let so much stuff slide. You let so much stuff slide, 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 slide. And then you're like, whoa, I've, let, I've, I've never thought I'd never do that. And then, like I was saying, it's about being a tester, if you remember. I said, so I've come back and I made dua in the haram. Made dua in the haram. I said, Ya Allah, grant me good friends. Grant me good friends. I came back. Well, like, as soon as I came back for me, all my friends, it was like Allah was just cutting them off, cutting them off, cutting them off, cutting them off, cutting them off. And I wouldn't even say, like, some of them, some of them, we were not even cut off in the sense of we were falling out, boom, boom, boom. We just started becoming distant. Lockdown as well, right? Lockdown. So it helped you. Straight away, lockdown came and he was be like, yo, like, why am I not chatting to this person anymore? He would shout at me, I'd be like, I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered going. I can't be, I can't be doing, I can't be. But yeah. then you'd be catching a train all the way down to London. Yeah. I remember as soon as I came back, I used to cry in my room. Cry in my room during Ramadan and I say, Allah grant me good friends and everyone's going and thinking, what is going on? This ain't my this ain't the dua I asked for. But like we know with dua there's the outcomes are many. Either he'll delay it for you, he'll grant it you, or he'll give it in Jannah. Allah delayed it for me. And then I remember straight after lockdown, I came to London, Razik may Allah honor him. He invited me to eat a barbecue. There I met so much brothers. Allah Mbali. So much brothers and one of the brothers, Abdullah. I don't know if you know him. He, he goes What's to What's funny is that Razik was on the fourth Umrah trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't even on your Umrah trip. I didn't even know him. But that's I didn't know him. But that's the but thing. I met him. But that, look at the people. brotherhood. Like, people will connect from trips. With, they will connect with brothers from their own trip. Yeah. They will connect with brothers that were on different trips. Well, like, and then through that, they will connect with people. 
just a network. Yeah, it's, it's a little network. Yeah. Like, yeah. family. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I will never forget the day he started talking to me about you. And in my mind, for a second, I thought. And he hasn't even been on any of the Omra Yeah, and in my mind, I thought he was on the Omra Show. That's where I met him. Until I was like, wait, you didn't come on Omra Show. He's like, yeah, but I don't. And he had sense. I met him at that barbecue. Wow. I remember that like, barbecue then. Oh, yeah. So all well, that like, to the point where, so this brother Abdullah, he, he, he comes to me, he goes, yeah, I come down. Man-. He goes to me, I come down to Manchester a lot. Since then, one friend, another friend, another friend, another friend, another friend, another friend, another friend. And I'm there thinking, whoa, this is the way Allah is accepted for you, for you, for you, for you. These people, I made dua and Allah is accepting it. I'm putting you, man, in my mm-hmm. life because of the dua I made. And you got people like Ustad Zuckman. Yeah. Students at University of Medina and that they're guy, in Manchester now. Yeah. So imagine now Allah's brought you friends that are students of knowledge yeah. that are in your city. Well, like, like, like if he sees this, like, well, like, that guy has done so much for me. Well, like, like, like after, after Allah, after you lot put, because you put me into connect with him and stuff like that, that guy's done so much for me. And well, like, it's like someone who's, he doesn't, he's like, he'll, he'll, sit, he'll sit me down straight up. We would sit outside his house. For like an hour or two hours, and we just sit down straight. I remember one time he pulled my phone off me and he said, Yo, what are you doing? He goes, You're 21 year old, you don't want to be, you're, you're, you're saying you want to get married, you say you want to get married, this is that. What are you going to be reading in Salah to your kids? How are you going to be teaching your kids Salah? He goes, Took my phone off me, he goes, You don't want to be 30 years old reading Salah, bro. I was like, mm, Yeah, you're right. And I remember just sat there, he, he pulled out his phone, he said, Yo, he called, his te- called my teacher now. He's my teacher of Quran. He, he picked up his phone. He, he wasn't a teacher at the time. At the time, I knew him, but I never used to go read Quran to me. I just thought I don't have time. I don't have effort. I just wasn't not feeling it whatsoever. And Luqman's the one who gave me that push. He called my teacher and he said to him, "Please, please accept this student as a, as a student of yours." The, the teacher was like, "This kid needs a push," and he goes, "Take him." Since that day, well, I, I, I thank Luqman every single day because every huruf I read. Luqman gets a reward for it. And we're like, I'm just going to keep reading. For obviously for myself and for him. Well, I like, friends, well, I, it has a massive benefits. Honestly. <laughs> honestly, man. <laughs> and just to mention as well that, you know, the brother Luqman, he's got a uh, Umrah company himself. Sunnah journeys. Who's Sunnah journeys. And especially, especially, especially for those of you that are from Manchester, Bradford, up north, up north, I would highly recommend it because. One thing you need to remember is the Umrah trip itself is just a little boost. Mm. What comes after in terms of the link ups, the classes, that's what's going to keep you on point and on job. And for the ones that are from London, it would benefit you to come with us because obviously we are in London, we're based in West London, we've got our classes in West London. The ones from up north, the brothers, you know, it's, it's rare that you get someone who's able to come regularly from up north to the classes. And that's why when they come back from Umrah, they you know have their downs and they don't really feel it whatnot so if you were to go with a group that's already in your locality when they come back they're gonna have classes in your locality link ups in your locality it's going to be a lot easier for you to stay in your deen that's not to say that you can't come on with us you can mm. of course you can the, the doors still open but i can't lie personally i would recommend if you've got a good solid Umrah agency in your locality and, and, they, and they're Salafi and, and they are active in da'wah and classes and so on and so forth link ups then I would recommend you should stick with what's local to you because at the end of the day the long term goal is more important than the yeah, short term 100% mm. for some people they need that short term you know bang but just have in mind yeah. the long term aspect 100%. of it as well you came back from Umrah yeah. lockdown happened then obviously I remember we launched our uh, part our Umrah and reloaded yeah. and you decided to come back why? Right. yeah I remember because I used to I used to do class with Ustad Yasin okay. online. And then I met more brothers as well. It was crazy. The ilm courses. Yeah, ilm courses and everything. Ustad Yasin is just a legendary guy. Allah Amberik. If you can benefit from him, benefit from him. One of the most prominent people in the UK. To benefit from Allah, honestly. Um, so yeah, I've come back now. to started studying with Ustad Yasin, and then I was like, bro, we've run ourselves. We we're like, yo, we need to go Umrah. We need to go Umrah. Got to the point where we were saying, yo, forget five star. We're gonna do it within ourselves. Allah We're gonna we're doing it ourselves. We're doing our umrah. If anything, spill that Ustad Yasin Imran. What do we do here? <laughs> we'll do that. Bye We'll get it through. Um, and then you man said part six reload, and I was like, mm, I don't know. At this time, I started working. I'm like, I don't know if I, want, if I can make it. And I said, you know what? Um, I think it was the last 
the last ones to get on the early bird, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah one of the yeah. last ones I thought, I'm not going to make this whatsoever. Um, I didn't even tell anyone I was coming. I just slapped it and I remember you posted that thing. I said, no, no one's going to have to know I'm coming at all. I remember. And then I made it down. And what I like, for me, the second time was better than the first. Mashallah. Massively. And, you know, and I think everyone who bent second time said that. But why? 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 For me, it was the first time I went, it was, it was, it was a sightseeing thing for me. Even though it's not it's sightseeing. It's more about trip. fun. As in, you have, you, as in, as in, you're kind of overwhelmed by the fact that yeah. you're in a new place. Yeah. You're with brothers. New people. Which is good and it which helps. Good, 100%. And, and, and that's, that's usually the first stage. Yeah, 100%. The brotherhood, the fun, the excitement, the yeah. brothers. And all of course, the ibadah and everything, yeah. all that's there. Yeah. But second time you think, this time let me take it. Let me take it seriously, yeah. And, <clears throat> and this the first time I didn't know Luqman properly. This time I knew Luqman. And me and Luqman had that connection. And he told me, you're coming to Umrah, pie it up. Allah. That guy, yeah, made this Umrah trip. Like took it from zero to hundred rule. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I remember we had that conversation we were speaking about, and well, like, this is like the benefits of having good friends. Luqman, it was in the Jamia of university, and I remember he said to me, he goes, "You're coming to Ma- you're coming to Medina, Mecca. You've got Quran ma- lessons in Manchester. Don't think you're coming here and forgetting the Quran." He goes, "We're going." As soon as we landed into Medina, he grabbed me by the hand and he goes, "Let's go find a Quran teacher in the Haram, straight away." I'm thinking like. Let me let me go pack my bags. Now he goes, no, we're going right now for a Quran, Quran teacher right now. We f- went down, found the Quran teacher, and it was like, it was literally, this Quran teacher had me on job. Literally, like, he grabbed me, he said to me, he said to me, revise this, go back to the masjid. So he literally just went, found a teacher read, that was teaching Quran in, in the masjid. Just went to him. Yeah. Literally, just I still went to him. him. Mashallah. Still got his number. Mashallah. And he used to come to me every day saying, Well, he gave me some advice today. He said this to me, he said that to me. Well, I, and that's that's the benefit of And like, your Arabic, how is it? It's, it's still it's bad. So, 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 it's, so he was he was just bad. putting words together. Yeah. He was trying his best. Yeah. Allah and very. And then the teacher even gave you a gift. Bad. Yeah, he gave me a pair of socks. A pair of socks. It's the gift that counts. It's, it's the, the gift. thought that counts. Yeah, well, like, it's the thought that counts. Not the socks. Even not he's probably socks. not a rich man, he <laughs> thought I want to gift the student. He just gifted it whatever he could. He got yeah. a pair of socks. So I'm doing the final question. What impact? Oh, you kind of already alluded to this, but what impact would you say that our da'wah in totality? I'm talking about the link ups. I'm talking about the umrah. I'm talking about the classes, the online videos, offline stuff. Everything in totality, quite comprehensively. What impact would you say it's had on you as a person? Life changing, Allah. Life changing because obviously it all comes after Allah, after through the permission of Allah. You see you see how it changes your life. Because one thing many people do when they say they're giving da'wah, and stuff like that, they give you da'wah for, they give you that paracetamol for just for there and then, just to numb the pain. But well, I, you lot give it as in, you, come, you find the root of the problem, you tackle the problem and then you keep going. You don't just leave that person to themselves. Because I remember when I came back, you were bombarded us with classes, 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 and we're like, whoa. And that's what's needed. Well, like without without knowledge and people are ignorant, and well, like, like that's what you do is that you come back, you you give them that reminder, that iman booster. Okay, now your iman's high. Rather than it going back down, join a class, do this. You got matting in the masjid. You've got this. You've got this. You got this. I don't know anyone that I don't know any other dawah organization that does that. Personally, Barakallah personally, on the topic of marriage, go ahead. You got thirty seconds. Speak to the sisters. <laughs> How can you put him on the spot? You've got to speak to the one who's been half. I can't be asking man to. Just know, just know, just know. Just are know. you on cinema match? No, I need to. I'm seeing can people I, get. Can, 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 can I'm people, I'm seeing people get married in Amsterdam today. <laughs> you yeah? see it? I've seen that. Imagine I was meant to go see him. He says to me, "Don't come. I've got marriage me in Amsterdam." <laughs> I'm like, rah. That's well, yeah. Can I just can I just say something? Yeah? Come on. The, well, like, the thing that shocked me is, you know, when we was at the airport, the at the airport, so basically, Al Bakr, yeah, he's a good wedding. <laughs> Serious. Very, like, Al- like, as in, you know, you know, obviously, sometimes fathers even don't necessarily always do the job the way it's supposed to be done, right? The welly, the guardian, he's supposed to speak to the, the guy, make sure he's <laughs> correct for the girl. Does that make sense? The point is, Al Bakr, but he does his welly thing proper. So we're good at playing roles, isn't it? Roles yeah. down, man. So 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 so, so I said Hamdun. 
I said, you jump in with him, have a, have a, have a marriage meeting with Abu Bakr. Like, pretend that Abu Bakr has got a sister for you and let's see. Allah, Allah, I thought Hamdi was going to get smoked because I've not, <laughs> I've not seen brothers make it out with the marriage meeting with, with Abu Bakr. I'll be honest. Serious. It's tough. You've never seen me do a marriage meeting before him. So I guess you've never seen me do a marriage meeting before <laughs> him. You mean so. like he rolls down and sees like a marriage meeting, Chama Ch- Ch- buys like a marriage meeting every time. <laughs> I'm struggling to do it. But Wallahi, Allah, Allah, I'm bad. I'm doing that way you were. And the thing is, because I know you, you weren't lying. Yeah. It's not like you were trying, like you were just being honest. Yeah. You are good answers. And wallahi, I was trying to throw him off. I kept Hello, coming in. bro. This I guy was in. jarring. I would just come in, make a joke, throw him off. Wallahi, his brother didn't lose conversion. I said, you know what, Allah, I'm bad at it. This guy's a potential candidate for marriage. Composed wallahi, he really is. Really is. But listen, 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 listen. listen. If the sisters want to find you, you need to be on Sunday match, Akhi. I need to jump on. Because now they're going to be looking for you. I need to jump on. Okay, okay so I'll tell you what. Go on. By the time this comes out, we're going to give you access. Yeah. Make a profile for free. Yeah. Make a profile. And we're going to put your profile code. See that? Does that make sense? I'm here. I'm in London. <laughs> I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> we'll do it right now. I'm going to sit in the corner. <laughs> shall, I edit, shall I edit his one now and just release it today? <laughs> <laughs> no, he has to, he has to make his... Get, you never know, you might get a you might make, he, has to make, <laughs> he has to make his profiles. You know why? Because if he gets mar- married, we're putting this on our documentary. <laughs> 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 I love that. So listen, sisters, right here you see his uh, marriage profile. Does that make sense? And uh, don't forget, also, along with that, the reason why we do this podcast, the fundraise uh, you know, for our studio. Sorry, what's it? We're going to make this funny. The time's about to run out. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, sorry. So sisters... If you're not on Sunday match and you're thinking how to be on Sunday match, use the promo code Hamdun. <laughs> <laughs> today, <laughs> today we're gonna give you, we're gonna give you that's H A M D U N, yeah, H A M D U N. It's gonna be down there. <laughs> with that said, brothers and sisters, we'll see you guys on the next episode of Ramadan with the Mandem, and there are some links in the description. You guys know what to do. H A M D U N. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace.